Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of face. Excuse the mess, but we are going to have a look today at one of my most favourite things. That is my Casio PT87. You will not believe how much I love this thing. Out of all the things, and I've got a lot of things, this is the thing. So it's basically uh, an electronic keyboard, but really it's more of a game. It's not multi-timbral or anything, it's just one key at a time. One up from a stylophone, but it does have multiple instruments that all kind of sound the same. One key play. But most importantly, it has these ROM packs, which are really interesting because one, they interface to the PCB using the edge strips, much like the uh, old Game & Watch screens. And uh, it has a little game where it'll put the lights on and you follow along the lights and um, it scores you. If you hit the rating button, it'll do a score. And I've only ever got as high as here. That's my top score on green sleeves. Green sleeves, of course, being the tune to play. Now you have a tuning feature here, which I guess are just some sort of internal oscillator. And I've always wanted to have a look inside this. Wow, it still has the same energizer. Batteries last a long time on this thing, although it does sound a little bit wavery, so it probably is getting time. But the thing with this is whenever I go and have a look on the eBay, they're actually quite hard to find. So I, I picked this up, I think, from a car boot sale. I think I got it for, I don't know, a tenner or something. I don't think it was one of the cheapo ones. It was quite expensive for what it was. So. The vendor knew what they had, uh, even though it was kind of bashed up. But this was the pocket operator of its day. And I would love to have one of those pocket operator keyboards. But the only thing is, I don't think it plays games and teaches you how to play. Otherwise, I'd be on it all over it like a rash. So the, why am I opening this up? I hear you cry. Um, just out of curiosity, really. I wanted to see if there's any capacitors in it, anything explodey, anything bulgy, anything fat that needs attending to. So I just want to have a look inside. Um, I'm not Everyone that keeps asking me, are you recovering from the weekend at Play Manchester? Um, I wasn't um, drinking in uh, Play Manchester, so I'm not uh, really in that much need of recovery, but uh, it was awesome. Um, so if anything, I'm recovering from the boredom that when you go back to your normal day-to-day -day life after being able to spend. I'll tell you what, this is what I miss. I'll tell you why. If you do something you love as a job, every day is just a brilliant day. It goes, a day goes quickly, it flies by, and it's a wonderful experience. And then if your job is a job that you don't like, or it's just, you know, very jobbish, it's slow, boring, and you're just doing anything in your power to stop you from topping yourself because it's just, I want the day to end so badly. So when you go to something like Play Expo, when your day flashes past you in excitement, it does make everything seem really boring in comparison when you come back. Right, um, there's some interesting things here. First of all, I'm trying to take this off, but look, <laughs> the battery wires go right the other way to the end. That's bonkers sort I've never seen that before. Um, but I'm going to just unpoing them. I don't know why they're... Oh, no. I can just about fold that over. A bit of dust in there, though. I'm going to just get me a little brush here, me little scritching brush. Blow out some of that. That's quite an impressive amount of dust, isn't it, in lint for a keyboard? I don't think I've ever really... How does it even get in? Oh, there's some here coming in on the uh, electronic door. Not to worry. <sighs> Oof. Now, a bit of plastic just sort of released itself then when I did that, so I might have snapped something inadvertently, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. <sighs> so this is a very interesting construction. We've got traditional components here, just all through hole. In fact, I don't see any ICs so far. This must be the LED strip here, by the way. I'm pretty confident that is. We'll have a check out that in a moment. And then these are your keys. And they're pushing on this thing here. Very interesting, really. I mean, there is some chip here. We might be able to identify that one. L4414 something. It would be more of an amplifier or something like that. So I think there's going to be some ICs on the back of that. So let's be ginger. You be ginger. 
and I'll be Fred. Small screw. Another small screw. So yeah, um, so it's all a bit meh right now. Um, and what with the weather being miserable, I don't know if you ever get that, but the weather, it just has not picked up this year. It's like this year has not started and I've not been running. Well, I have actually, I ran uh, eight miles on Monday, but I need to just get my crap together and get running. And if you find yourself in that position where you cannot be motivated, look, there is that piece of plastic that was broken from this thing. Mm, better watch that. Um, to be motivated, check out your diet because what I'm finding is if I'm eating a lot of cack, when I say cack, I mean sugary things um, and carbohydrate y things, um, it makes me feel more miserable. And then that makes me feel in turn miserable because I won't go running. So it's a vicious cycle. So you've got to start somewhere. Start with the cack. So I went out today and I bought meat. Lots of meat. Substitute a piece of bread with a piece of meat. That's going to be the old, the motto. Very difficult though. I appreciate the struggles people have, um, myself included, because... Um, if you work in an office, you kind of um, abide by the culture of your environment, don't you? It's hard to get out of that. Right, ah, that's interesting. So that's why that was on a flexi, because that little thing is on an edge contact. So weird, isn't it? So it was originally part of this PCB, but they've had to... Uh, what? <laughs> they've... wait, what? <laughs> why have they done that? Anyway, let's not... Let's not question it. The reason I suspect they ever done that is because they probably use these parts in other other keyboards. So we're going to peel this off. And this one, look, that's going to be those things. I'm sure that's the yeah, that's the LED strip right there. Look at that. My word, that's interesting, isn't it? Crikey, think about that, right? They've got a lot of LEDs here, um, not so many resistors. So I'm guessing they're only driving one LED at a time. Oh, and that is the keyboard. Wow, I've never taken apart a keyboard. This is exciting, isn't it? Let's get this last bit out. Yeah. So sometimes I see talented people on TV or on the internet or wherever and um, I get inspired by what they're doing and I just want to do what they're doing and then I kind of rush out to try to do it and kind of fail and then have to decide how am I going to approach this? How is it realistic for me to approach this challenge? So there's not much on here apart from these, this HD 61703B01 which I'm guessing is some sort of custom chip. There's no goo on it um, although these uh, switches here are looking decidedly funky and this lot here is dusty as heck but it's interesting to see how they work so the black keys are it's all pushing down basically on this membrane and you've got the uh, black keys kind of affixed to this structure fortunately and uh, the white keys are just pressing on the in-between so i think this just needs a little bit of a dust we can just do that we can give it a dust so um so while you watch uh, a footballer or something that you might admire some sort of sports person You've got to set yourself some sort of reasonable target. I don't think it's beyond anybody these days in giving something a go. So, using the football as an example, um, you can always just go to the park or something and have a kickabout. Start with that. If you want to run a run a marathon or something, start with a little run around the block, um, and maybe you'll just find where you're happy. You might find where you're happy. I'm quite interested to see what these buttons do, how they work too. Everything on this is pretty much push button apart from these uh, contacts here. But interesting enough, the technology is very much the same. Just having a look, the carbon on here looks good. We don't have to replace any of that, which is kind of annoying because I'm still waiting to try out my Lakia Graphdicoe. <laughs> graphite varnish. Get our graphite on. But I'm hoping a bit of a clean here was going to help with the, some of that weird bending sounds. You know, that kind of circuit bending wow wow we get when we play this thing. Though, this could probably be one of those keyboards that are really hackable. That's probably why there aren't any, because people are just buying them and messing up, 
all the innards to give them circuit bending capabilities, which I'm not sure I quite agree with. Um, I'm not going to use a liquid cleaner on this because it's going to get behind the key things and that's going to be a pain. I think dusting will be fine. A bit of gentle dusting, he says. Vigorously. That's nice, isn't it? So pocket operators, I think it's the PO1 or something, the fancy one. It's not a cheap, cheap gadget, unfortunately. It's um, proper money. Oh, there's some goop. Some goop on these keys. I think somebody, maybe they'd stuck some uh, letters or something on them, but I think we can get that from outside if we're bothered. Right, put that aside. Let's look at this. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> I think it's just there's some foam on some, some of the internals and it's perish, that's all that is. I don't think it's human flesh. A little twist, a flick of the wrist. That's what the showman said. I bought a lovely bunch of coconuts. Ugh. Okay, I think that's enough. Enough of just everything. Andrew, enough. Stop. Let's pop this back in. Nice. Nice. I don't think I showed you my most prized treasure, though, from the Play Expo yet. And that was from Scott, from Scott's Game Asylum. And uh, it was a fantastic Sega Game Gear. And you're like, well, didn't you have a Game Gear? Yeah, I did, briefly. But the thing that makes it special to me now as an adult is that Sega never really do anything with the Master System. So the Game Gear it's kind of the closest you can get, isn't it? It's the closest disc you can get um, to a sort of, you know, Game Boy type thing with a Master System. And not only that, it was revealed to me that apparently you can play Master System games in it even. So it can, uh, it was that compatible that it could play Master System games, which is pretty amazing, really. I'm sure it had a, a broader palette and a slightly different screen resolution, but boy, God, by Jove, did Sega pull out all the stops on that and it's um, it's just a crying shame really ah oh, okay this is where you gotta be careful because there are internal screws and external screws here so remember we undid all those big external screws so we just gotta be careful how we put these back now this is the tuning doofer here so while I'm putting these in I'm just eyeballing this board just to see Ouch. What one could do to uh, add some interesting capabilities to this. And I think you could almost certainly uh, bring that out. It says it's a 30k and uh, I've already messed with it so that's probably going to affect things a little bit. Affect the pitch. But all of these things really. I mean you've got just standard electrolytics. everything here. I bet if you mess with any of these components, it's going to affect the uh, the oscillations, the oscillations under the, in under the hood here. So I'm wondering. Oh, there's that. There's that dirty bit of foam, by the way. It's literally coming apart as we every time we touch it, it's just doing that. Don't know what to do with that yet. I'll have a think. Well, I try to locate where this bloody last screw went, and I think it went here. I will know. I will know when it I come to put everything else on. So I think we just leave it. Who cares? It's been in there for 20 years. It's absolutely going to be fine for another however long I manage to live. Give it 20 years. Let me see how this thing was. Yep. 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 
Okay, we got it. We got this. We got this. We're on it. So the next play is in October at the Norbrook, and it's confirmed, so I hear, allegedly, that it's the last time it's going to be at the Norbrook um, Hotel. So that's, uh, that's going to be pretty sad, actually, because that's where a lot of us met at that hotel, and a lot of good memories have uh, been there from that. So uh, if you can, think about booking now. I'm staying in the hotel, and uh, just to get the full ambience, a lot of people uh, lavish a lot of hate on that hotel, so it will be interesting. It's not necessarily the finest of hotels, I'll admit, but it's got its own charms. You know, you might get a bit of blood on the wall or someone trying to break into your room. All those sorts of things, but by Jove, it was an experience. Look at this, I'm having trouble now getting these in. It's almost like they're re-tapping themselves. Doesn't help I'm using this stupid screwdriver. Too lazy to go find me other tools. I've got the other tools though in the front office where I've been doing that Atari ST and actually I've got to finish it that my resistors came. So I got me new transistors and me resistors so I need to do that but there's something weird about that machine. It's like I'm afeared to work on it. I'm scared that I'm going to replace those parts and it's still not going to work and it's going to start to really be getting into that grey zone of me having to learn how to really figure out how to fix an Atari ST and I was like I don't I don't know if I want that knowledge I barely managed to get through the day as it is I've already pushed out even all my working knowledge <laughs> so do I want to fill it with Atari ST right now when there's so many gifted people who already know it um, well, I guess the answer is clearly I ought to because it just means there's one more person who at least knows how to fix whatever that one thing was that went wrong with it. And I can make a video about it and show it to you guys. So, no beating about the bush, Andrew. Stop wasting time. Go and get it. Go and get, get it. Get it done. Do you ever do that? Got to do that. The moment of truth. Ooh, that sounded nice. Hang on a minute. Something's not right. Oh. No memory card. <laughs> Freak. Freaking out there. I was really starting to panic. Boom. Now, I haven't seen any of these around. I mean, I've only seen one in a video showing an ancient keyboard. And they're saying, look, oh, you know what it was on? It was on the Computer Chronicles. And there was a, they were showing a Casio keyboard that used these. That shows you how uh, you know, aged this thing is. Sounds a bit slow, doesn't it? Oh! Whatever. Right. That's how you do it. Let's try one more, shall we? This is Unterlanter's Heimweh. Okay. Nice. Shall I try all the instruments? Violin, Celesta, organ, trumpet, harpsichord, clarinet, piano, flute.
beautiful. Thank you for watching.